Oh my goodness, intern, there are so many deer in here now. We're definitely going to have to clear some of this up. Look at you. Look at you with your little leaves out of your mouth. You are so adorable. I love it. I love it. And the Baron Gro Ground Caribou number nine is now pregnant. My goodness, you guys are busy. Are you, are you stuck, sir? Do you need a little bit of help? <laughs> Oh, Bambi. Bambi now has so many children. So let's scooch him over. There you go, Bambi. He got a little bit confused. And let's figure out which one of them is going to be Bambi the second. This one is a male. Bambi the second. There we go. Whoops, Bambi with two eyes. Let's do Bambi with one eye. And then let's see, Clover is the mother. Clover has only had one baby thus far, but it looks like Willow has managed to have... Wait a second. Bambi! How many kids do you have? There's like... Wait a second. There's two baby deer. Baby deer number six, right? And baby deer number seven. Willow is the mother. And Willow only wants to recognize number seven. It looks like baby deer number six has been... Oh, it's Bramble. Bramble's the mother. Bramble, are you recognizing? Yeah. Okay, well that's interesting. We've got some interesting deer genetics going on here, but they're happy. And good morning to you, intern. We just stepped in some uh, deer poop, but that's fine. We can clean it up. That's why we wear the boots that we do. And look at the adorable little mushrooms in here. And the adorable little baby. Look at you. Look at you. So everything is going great. And today, intern, we have the exciting opportunity to add in some new creatures to our zoo because we have gotten permission to add in a very special set of red foxes. We have Todd the Fifth, who's actually from the Beaver Lodge Beaver Park. The Beaver Lodge, um, yeah, Beaver Lodge Beaver Park. And so we have Todd the Fifth. He is a descendant of the original Todd and the original Vixen that we had there. Was that the zookeeper? Yeah, it was. And then we have a marzipan who is a red fox, but she has an amazing black pigmentation to her fur. So I'm very excited to add these two in, but we're also going to be keeping an eye today on Lemming Nommer because we're trying to make her last days very comforting, very relaxing. Uh, oh, and Echo, Echo just gave birth? What? Echo, I didn't even know you were pregnant. Man, she really snuck one over on us, and she did indeed pick Timber as her mate. I can't believe that. She just had some puppies, and Halo's really thirsty. Hang on, Halo. Where are you? Are you, like, stuck somewhere? Oh, my gosh. They are very, they're very noisy right now. Is everybody thirsty? No, just Halo. I think she kind of got herself stuck somehow. Challenging win. Oh, my gosh. That's why she's so distracted. Get in here and get get some water. Get some water. In the water. In the water you go. Oh my goodness. I didn't even I didn't even see that Echo got pregnant. So Timber has definitely become the alpha male and it looks like Win and and her sister Halo are trying to determine who's the victor now. Where's where's the babies? I want to see the wolf pups. This is exciting. This is totally unexpected. Did she go and have them, like, in a corner somewhere? Hang on a second. Let's see. Halo's really thirsty. She's just too busy challenging Win. She can't seem to focus. Calm down. Calm down. We're going to have to let her calm down for just a minute. All right. And let us find where... Oh my gosh. I cannot believe. Let's find where the babies are the wolf pups where's she hiding them let's see down we go i can't believe we have baby pups that's that's like that's what we were hoping for but i did not expect them to show up so soon all right echo where have you waiting to nurse she has had her pups kind of in this hidden little forest area she just managed to wander right in there and made her own little bro. We're actually going to take out a few of these trees just for now because I worry that the pups will get like trapped. And where are they? So they're in here. <gasps> My goodness. Let's get down and check this out. Wolf pups. Wolf pups. Wolf pups. Wolf pups. Oh my goodness. Wolf pups. Echo. Oh, 
Oh, she has pulled through. She has proven that she is definitely the alpha female. And she has had the first babies. So we have wolf pup number six, who's also a female. So this is going to be Echo the second. And then we have wolf pup number seven, who's a little male. So this will be Timber the second. Oh my gosh, look at the babies. All right, so there's definitely a lot going on here. There you go, little one. Definitely a lot going on here in the Timberwolf exhibit. I knew these guys would be so exciting to examine. Now let's see if Halo has calmed down. She needs to really focus on keeping uh, keeping good care of herself. All right, looking for something to drink. She's challenging Win again. She's so distracted, she can't focus on taking care of herself. That won't be good. We might have to break up the, the pack a little bit if they can't even manage that much. Timber's doing good. He's gonna go play with the bone. I wonder if he'll help take care of his children the way he should. Is that Wynn? Where's Wynn? Is this, no, this is Redwood. So where is Wynn? She's just over here eating a beef shank. Is that why? Oh, and she's mated with Redwood. Oh my goodness. So Wynn and Redwood have paired up. And Halo's kind of the odd girl out, and she cannot calm down. So we're gonna we're gonna see if we can just get her to calm down a little bit longer. We might have to rehome her as much as I would hate that, but we might have to rehome her if she can't calm down. My goodness! All right, my gosh! There's a lot of see. You have to pay attention to how all the animals are doing, so that you don't miss out on the ones where there's a little bit of drama getting started. So let's see. Barren ground caribou. Penguins. All right, let's check on Lemming Nomer. I just want to watch the old girl. We'll let. We'll see if we can let the the wolves calm down for a second. What a busy morning we're having, in turn. And look, they've been playing with their jar with fish. So let's push those over, and then let's climb down into the herring ball. Oh, that's amazing. And let's see, Lemming Nomer. Your little GPS tag said that you're sleeping under the kelp. Is she up here somewhere? I could have sworn it said she was sleeping under the kelp, but let's look around again. Because I, I love the Mignomer. She's been with us for so long. It's kind of like losing Comet, you know what we I mean? And that happened while we were so busy. Wow, we're definitely going to have to rehome some of the Emperor Penguins. And get the Atlantic Puffin a little friend. We're going to have to do that. Okay, there she is. She's just sleeping in the shade under her favorite tree where she birthed so many different little animals. Let's get a picture of her snoozing. Hey, sweetie. Hey, old girl. There you go. Give you a little belly rub. I just want to make sure she's comfortable in her old age. I know it's exciting to have all these new animals showing up to the zoo. Yeah, what's up, old girl? But we want to make sure that we pay attention to the, the old standbys who have really helped make the zoo what it is. So, yeah, she's just snoozing. That might be her last snooze under that tree. So, let's leave her in peace. And then, meanwhile, we are up to uh, level four. Absolutely four-star zoo now. That is fan-freaking-tastic. And what I want to do is get the fox area set up. So, let's try to... Oh, look at the wolf pups! I'm surprised people are not flocking over here. Are you kidding? I would totally be flocking over here if there were wolf pups. And I, I mean, I am because there's wolf pups, but I mean, if I was new to the zoo. All right, let's go ahead and we will get some fencing put across here. Um, Yeah, like right up here so people can look in and they can enjoy seeing our foxes. So this will be like the little fox viewing port. And then we'll go ahead and put the normal wooden fence over this way. There we go. We've got a nice little fox zone. Uh, once we clear out this giant rock, this will probably be... Well, we'll go ahead and actually extend it a little bit further. You know me. I like to make sure the animals have a nice section. Like, not a, a little teensy zone. But they need to have plenty of room to kind of roam. There. See? That, that gives them like a whole nother corner they can be in. So let's go ahead and figure out... Oh, Echo is really thirsty. Echo dear, are you having trouble figuring out the water too? Alright, and let's figure out if we can keep Halo here. If she's gonna just keep challenging her sister. 
going to sleep in the shade. All right, she seems to be calming down. Stalking Echo the second. So the pups are stalking each other. That's awesome. Let's see. Echo is now going to drink the water. So she's figuring it out. Let's get in here. All right. Seems like Halo's calmed down. I think she was just un like uh, unhappy to find out that she's like one of the only wolves who is not going to have a mate. Oh. Now Echo's challenging somebody. Oh my gosh. No, she's just drinking the water. Okay. Okay. So everybody is doing okay. Just a little bit antsy. And now people are coming over to look at everyone. <gasps> Fish Flipper is going to give birth. Oh, what a happy day. Don't worry, foxes. We will get back to you in just a second. There's just always so much to do in the zoo. Oh, and Lemming Nomers wandered off somewhere. Is that Fish Flipper? I think that's Fish Flipper. I think she's headed under the tree. The tree, of, the pine tree of fertility and like seal birth. Yep. The good old tree where they always like to go to have their pups. Where I can't walk into. I guess I'm allergic to this type of fur tree. Alright, what do we have going on back there? Pretty sure that's Fish Flipper. Don't walk on her, rude zookeeper. <gasps> and there we go! Out slides a new little baby! So Fish Flipper has just given birth. Alright, is it a boy or girl? Oh. Fish Flipper! You had a little girl! So this will be Fish Flipper the second. There we go. I love keeping track of the family lines as long as we can. Halo, you're awake now, and you're challenging your sister. You're, you're, you're too thirsty for this. Alright, we're gonna have to adopt Halo out. I'm sorry, Halo. That makes me really sad, but she's just not... You have to keep track of if the pack gets along or not. In the wild, if they have a member who doesn't get along with them, they would just chase that member away. You know what I mean? There wouldn't be any of this nonsense of of letting... Look at the cuties! There wouldn't be any of this nonsense of letting a really aggressive member stay in the pack. They would chase them away and they would go form a new pack or find new wolves to be with. So, you know, we just, we just can't have that nonsense. All right, now back to our poor little, poor little red foxes who have been waiting so patiently for their, their little moment to shine. So let's get in here, kind of spread everything. They've got a beautiful little creek going through the center of their land. I love that. And then let's go ahead and we'll get in some nice trees. Really, like I think temperate grassland mostly. We'll focus on like temperate grassland or open, open grassland trees, depending. So just temperate grasslands. And foxes are exceptionally adaptable creatures. You'll actually find foxes uh, like over pretty much, oh look at that beautiful bur oak, pretty much over the entire uh, northern hemisphere. And they spread around quite actively. So let's see, and then we want to get down trembling aspen. Oh, barren ground caribou is now pregnant. Yeah, why not some trembling aspen? So it looks like the, the beaver's trembling aspen forest has just spread into the fox exhibit. See? It's very nice when we can kind of blend things together like that a little bit. And in fact, we'll even try to blend it together by then coming on this side and scooting like a fir tree in here. These are exceptionally adaptable creatures. They are not very picky about what kind of plants are out there. Uh, if they can eat something or if they can exploit some food source, they're going to figure out how to do it. Has anyone shopped here? No one has ever shopped here. We might try trading this out for like a more traditional eatery of some kind. All right, and then let's see what we can put down for their entertainment and enrichment. I'm gonna have to figure out some plants. Um, all right, here we go. Let's add in like a rope post with ice close to the window again so that if they play with it, they'll do it in front of where people are. And then we'll put in another little scavenging spot. There we go. See a little scavenging zone for them. And let's try let's try a pursuit ball cuz most of the like captive foxes I've met tend to be kind of like they they play and interact with items. So we'll put out some balls and things like that. And then what about the food? Let's do the artificial carcasses. And then we'll actually put some some like ferns and bushes down. And under those ferns and bushes, we'll put some of the, the baby chicks, which sounds really bad, but that's like if they, they came across some wild baby chicks and raided a nest or something, like right there. 
and then like fish can go down by the river. I guess we need to smooth that out a little bit in turn. Where's our shovel? I mean, to do to do, there's the shovel. Okay, smooth, smooth. Hopefully that'll work. Come on. There we go. We'll say like some fish got flipped up onto the shore. There, that'll do it. And then what do they need for burrow? Let's go ahead. Oh, this is perfect. And we'll give them this nice burrow back here, kind of in the corner. Whoops. Do, 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 do. Wonderful. And now let's surround that with some ferns. So they've got some area to kind of feel like they're hidden away. And fox families will actually stick together for a long time. The kits will stick around for quite a while to help take care of their, their next generation of siblings. There we go. And then we'll just get down here. I'm just going to put some ferns down. Not too many. We want people to be able to see what's going on. Some in the back over here. All right, that should, that should be good for them. They're really not very hard to take care of at all. Uh, I want to add in... Oh, listen to the wolves. That's so exciting. Let's add in... <laughs> some little dandelions, because why not? So some straight... Wow, that spooked me, that water. Some stray dandelions. Um, let's put in... Maybe a little bit of grasses. Why not? Again, you want to you wanna think, what can you add in to provide a lot of scent, smell, excitement, enrichment? Um, ooh, like little, little teensy bushes. That's getting that mid-level layer, like we've talked about before. You have different layers in forest. Your, your like canopy layer, and then your floor layer, and then, then the mid-level layers. There we go. So let's go ahead and move the foxes in. So we have Todd the fifth. Put him right in here. Oh, somebody's pregnant. We need to get. We need to look through our, our little updates because somebody is pregnant. Uh, and there's Marzipan. So let me introduce you guys to Marzipan, because she is a red fox with black pigmentation, which is quite beautiful, actually. All right, and there you go, Marzipan. And there they are. And the first thing they're doing is running straight for the chicks. Oh no, we lost a catfish to illness. Okay, and we need to make sure we put in a gate for these guys so that our zookeepers can get in and out um, possibly right there uh, I hope that doesn't obstruct the views too much and then where is our we need to find the wolf keeper and we will now have her help by attending to the foxes as well wolf keeper there we go wolf keeper creaker keeker and she's now got her fox exhibit to take care of as well. And so let's get in here and we will see Marzipan, the black pigmented red wolf. And isn't she just beautiful? She's very unique looking. I really like her. So it's going to be interesting to see if any of her and Todd the Fifth's pups will have her pigmentation or not. So I'm really looking forward to seeing that. How you doing, Todd? He's doing good. His future mate is just walking around in here. Oh, here we go. Julie's checking out the animals. Always a good thing. And let's put down a little donation box in case people are so inclined to donate. And we'll add a couple more benches. And I don't know how closely you pay attention to these kinds of things in turn, but we are starting to run a little bit low on funds. So it may soon be time to go through our animals and see what animals we will be sending off to other, other institutions in exchange for a bit of money. And that's just one of the ways that we have to fund our zoo because we're always doing these big giant projects and guess what? That costs money. So we'll be working on that in a little bit too. But... That's enough for today. Is Lemming Nommer still kicking around? Oh, and Clover's now pregnant. There we go. Let's see, Lemming Nommer. Lemming Nommer, my dear. She is still with us. She is pushing that limit. She is an old girl, but she's still here. There you go, old girl. So I'm gonna stay with her just to make sure that she's gonna be okay and everything's going all right. Got some snoozy seals snoozy ribbon seals over here and then i will see you bright and early in the morning in turn and we'll go through our animals and we'll make sure we don't have any exhibits that are too overpopulated and we'll see how our foxes are settling in so hi living nomer i'll see you in the morning in turn bye, -bye.